Hello, and welcome to Chapter 1 of Kernigan and Ritchie. My name is Charles Severance, and of course I'm your professor for this course that's about history. So, welcome to this course. It's really part of a learning path. Um, I don't think that C should be your first programming la language, and I don't think it should be your last programming language. I have a whole series of courses that are all free and available online, both just on the web, on places like Free Code Camp, and Coursera, and edX. And the place that you're at in my learning path is uh, uh, that you're at right now is C programming. And we're not learning C programming to learn C programming. We're le learning C programming to take a historical look at how computers work and lead into uh, computer architecture. I'm not trying to teach you coding in C, but I am going to explain how computers work and things like how Java works using C as kind of like the it just gives me a way to explain Java to you. So, the outline of the textbook is a kind of pretty typical computer science textbook where it uh, it starts off easy and then whoa, everything goes pretty crazy. So chapters one through four, and we're on chapter one right now, is mostly syntax and it's just another programming language. And especially if you know a little bit of Java or a little little bit of PHP or a little bit of JavaScript, some of that syntax is going to be like, whoa, of course this is familiar. And the answer is, well, that's because all those languages came from C. So it kind of feels like just another programming language, except that arrays are not lists and character arrays are not strings and character arrays kind of look like strings, but they don't work like strings and you can get in all kinds of trouble. But other than that, once you sort of stop worrying about how long things are, pretend it's okay, which is dangerous, of course, when you write code. Chapters one through four feel a lot like you're just any other programming language, but then chapters five and six are the valuable chapters of this book, but they also become a lot more difficult. So don't, don't give chapters one through four short shrift because five and six are gonna just go woo. Um, and then seven and eight is just sort of filling in detail and uh, seven and eight are not so critical. Um, you know, it, it just kind of fills in all the gaps. So that's, that's the outline of the book. Just expect that one through four is gonna be smooth and then five and six are gonna be like, now we're really getting somewhere, okay? So looking at chapter one, again, chapters, sections one through one five looks not that different than any other programming language that you've learned. It's chapter one, uh, section 1 1.6 is arrays, you static allocation, arrays, you, you have to know how big they are when you declare them and you can't resize them until chapter five, at which point we'll start talking about dynamic memory and pointers and resizing. Chapter 1.7 and 1.8, functions and parameters, and it's all call by value in this early phase. Call by reference is in chapter five, because we need to know about pointers before that we talked about chapter five, even though they use a little pointer syntax here and there in chapter one. And section 1.9 is character rays. Read this one closely, because there is no string object in C. There's no objects at all in C. And in section 1.10, they talk about variable scoping between functions, and that feels kind of similar to, to other languages. And part of it is because other languages took their inspiration from C. So if we just take a quick look at C character arrays, we must understand that the size of the character array is at allocation time, and there is nothing auto-extended. And if you write a for loop that goes off the end of the loop, like I've got, where you know I have a character array that's 10 long and I write a loop that goes up to 1,000 storing data in it, eventually the program will blow up. And you can see, like, I mean, in Python, you just make, you just add characters. Whereas in C, if you add characters beyond what was allocated, the system blows up. And you probably heard me say more than once that the C language is probably responsible for 90% of the security holes, significant security holes in all of computing and this kind of code where you allocate an array and then you wildly go beyond it ends up making it so that people can inject things into operating systems and routers and all kinds of things. So this is why we don't use C to write programs. I mean, here we are in the first page. The example one of chapter one is why we don't write C very often. Or if we do, we have to be really careful at reviewing it and making sure that it's right. It's really fast, but it's also dangerous. Uh, string constants and character constants. 
strings and characters in most languages, Java is a little different, but PHP, Python, and JavaScript treat single and double quotes roughly the same, and they create string constants, and that's a multi-character thing that has a length. C doesn't have a multi-character thing that has a length. It has an array of characters that has a zero character at the end of it. In C, single quotes are a single character, and double quotes are a character array. So a single, a, a double quote with one character in it is actually two bytes because it's the character and the string ending. Whereas in Python, a string has a length. It doesn't really have an ending character. There's a special character that we use for an ending. In C, a character is a byte, which is a short integer, usually eight bits in, in, uh, in most computers. And so we, you got to be real careful. You, you got double quote things and single quote things, and single quote things in, in C are far more like integers and far less like strings. And so in, in, in Python, you just use them interchangeably, single quotes and double quotes. Character sets. The char in C is like a number. It's a tiny number. It's eight bits long. So you can go from zero to 255. And the character representations depend on the character set, but quite often they're ASCII. And so you can just go look up an ASCII chart and figure out what the numeric representation of the letter A is. And in Python, we can actually see the ordinal position of A by using the ORD function. But that's the ORD function of a single character string, which pulls the ORD of the very first character. And we find that it's 65. And if you look up in the ASCII chart, it's 65. But in Python, Python 3, Python 3 are multi-byte characters that represent Unicode. And Unicode is much larger than 8 bits. I think Unicode is 32 bits. Uh, UTF-8 is a way to represent Unicode. And Unicode is a 32-bit character set. And so if you say, what is the character, the integer equivalent of the character smiley face, you see that it's 128,522. And that's in a space of 32-bit, it's a 32-bit integer, and that's the character point within that 32-bit integer that represents smiley face. In C, there is no smiley face. You can't represent, well, unless you put a bunch of libraries into it, but the normal out-of-the-box C can't represent a smiley face. It can represent an uppercase A, and you can say, what is the A? And you'll notice we're printing it out with a percent C and a percent D, and, it, and it's the same thing. If you print a, 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 a A character out as a, a character, it's an A, and if you print it out as an integer, it's an A. We don't even need an ORD function because character constants are really integer constants in the ASCII character set, okay? Just Understand that. Every time you see single quote A, single quote, think of it as an integer, as a number that happens to be conveniently looked up for you by the C compiler. And you can take a look at the ASCII character set, and you can go look at uppercase A, and you see that its decimal equivalent is 65. You also see in this table that its hexadecimal is 41, and its octal is 101, and its, its binary, its actual bits are 1, bunch of zeros and a one. Now, the reason we like octal and, and hex as programmers is it's easier to convert directly one without having, uh, converting from decimal requires like divisions and modulo and stuff like that. Um, but converting from octal or hex to binary is direct on a, on a digit by digit basis. So I can convert an octal digit to a binary set of binary digits just by looking at each digit in succession. So when we're printing out and we want to be able to understand what the raw bit pattern is of some data, we tend to print it out in hex or in octal so that we can quickly figure out what bits are set inside that uh, value. Strings in C are not strings. They're arrays of characters. And there is no length. So you can ask Python what the length of a string is, and the string knows its length. But in C, the, you can ask what the length of a string is, but it turns into a for loop that scans until it finds the end of the string. And the end of the string is a special character, which is quote backslash zero quote, which is zero. I mean, it's literally the integer zero. So you have characters that are non-zero, and then you have a zero character. And the length is how many characters are in this array up to the end. Now, 
that is different than the allocation. So you can have, in this case, I have a, an example of a six character array and I put six things in it, it's all full. I could have terminated it, like you notice I say x sub three equals zero. It's no, the, it's still got six characters in the array, but now the end of the string in that array or the end of the character sequence in that array has a zero at position sub three. And of course, array started zero, so you see the first three characters. And the third one is an end, and that, that stops it to print out. And so you gotta, you gotta A, allocate for the end of the character string, and you, you B, you've gotta have it there. If it, it, just because it goes up to six, if you don't have the end of the string, it's gonna go off and, and, and ran, randomly go through memory until it blows up probably, right? And so strings must be terminated. If you append something to a string, first you have to have, have enough space in that string. If you append something to a character array, you have to have enough space. And then if you overwrite the end of the string, you gotta add another little mark to say, now the end of the string has been moved. So terminating a string is a thing that you always gotta think about, both when you're scanning through a string and when you're creating a new string. Like I said, the C string length is only computable by a loop that scans for a zero character. So there's a strlen function in string.h that computes the string, but it's very, very different than the len function in Python. The len function in Python, x is an object and length is an attribute of that object. Whereas in C, there is an array and it has a length and it has a zero position, but to ask how long is it, you've got to actually loop through all the characters looking for the zero marker. So you kind of can find a length of a character, a length of a string, the length of a quote unquote string in C, but you gotta write a for loop to do it. You don't have to write a for loop because Python just knows the length. Later, we'll bring all these things together, much later. So one of your assignments, exercise 117, is reversing a string in C without requiring any information, an extra string. You can't, you have a string, it's got a certain amount of space and you've got to just flip. You got to swap the characters. You're going to probably have to draw a picture to do that. It is exercise 117 and I'm going to tell you, do not cheat. There are probably a million solutions out there on the internet. Chat GPT will tell you how to do it. Don't be tempted. As you do this, you will get there. I show you a <laughs> blurred out version of it. It's not all that much code. So don't shortcut this. Don't just the solution, getting the solution to this assignment without actually doing it is the meanest thing you'll ever do to yourself. You have to do the reversal in place. It's a classic interview question. At the interview, you don't get to go to chat GPT. You got to think about even length strings, odd length strings, empty strings, and single character strings. You're gonna to have to draw some pictures. Take your time. Enjoy this assignment. Seriously. It's not that big. And when you get it done, you can be very, very proud of yourself that you really thought through the low level storage of what an array of characters with an ending marker is working with. And so that's why it's such a good interview question. So there we go, that's kind of my call outs from chapter one, give you a sense of overall sense of the book, see character arrays and encouraging you to actually do your homework even though there's a million ways to get it done for you. Cheers. <music>